Jeremiah chapter 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah, saying, Go. <clears throat> now, go is mentioned 108 times in 99 verses of Jeremiah. It's an action word means go. The Christians told, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Cry in the ears of Jerusalem. Judah, the capital. We're told to go in all the world. Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, speaking about Israel, the love of thy epistles, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. Yeah, the wilderness is a place of no growth. And God is recorded, though there were troubles in the wilderness, the children of Israel, there were some that sought God. And they reached out to God. Israel was in holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase and the first fruit is before they went into the land. They were the children of those that were killed off. In the 40 years of wilderness journey, all that devoured him shall offend all the enemies. And Lemonek and all that tried to get rid of Israel. Evil shall come upon them. There's that I will curse them that curse you. There it is. Pass on from Jeremiah. God speaking. So Babylon's going to come and destroy Jerusalem, and Babylon's going to get a curse for cursing the Jews. Assyria and Nineveh have come and taken away the northern tribes, and they're going to get a curse. saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And for today, that is not... You're getting other words. You're not... The children are not getting in their Sunday school the Bible stories. They're getting other stories. And in the pulpit, you're getting nice little stories and anecdotes. And very rarely are you getting Bible. And on the television, on the radio, you're not getting the Bible. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. O house of Jacob, Jeremiah speaking to them, and all the families of the house of Israel. Jeremiah is a Judah, Jerusalem book. But look at verse 5 of chapter 1. He's called to the nations too. Jeremiah has a message to Judah, Jerusalem, and to the nation. So as we rightly divide Jeremiah, we need to look at who is Jeremiah speaking to. And now it's Israel. But I will spiritualize the lessons to today where there's not the word of the Lord. They're not going preaching the gospel. They got another agenda. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me? God say, what sins are in me, God? Now, God is holy. There is no sin. That they are gone far from me. They're not only gone from the Lord. They've gone far away from the Lord. And the churches today have gone far from the Lord. Now, God says to Jer Jeremiah, speaking to the house 
of Jacob in the house of Israel. What iniquities that you've gone far from me. And God speaks through Jesus Christ. And the angel in the book of Revelation, you say you're rich, you say you're great, you say you're wonderful, but you're poor, miserable, wretched, naked, and blind. And Jerusalem and Judah in the time of Jeremiah were great, were doing wonderful with some setbacks. And that's the attitude of the church today. And God says to the house of Jacob and the house of Israel, you've gone away from me. Far away. And God says to the church, you're poor, miserable, naked, and blind. And have walked after vanity and are become vain. Empty. Nothing. That's poor, miserable, naked. It's the same condemnation to the church. Of the Laodiceans today. You think you got something. You ain't got nothing. Neither say they. Where is the Lord? And today in the, in the, in the church. Uh, they don't. When you preach the word of God. They don't recognize it. When you stand and, and have a public ministry, that's not what Jesus would do. And the elements of the church today is not after the word of God. It's not after Jesus Christ. It's not after God. It's after the flesh. And it's the same state of Jacob in Israel. Neither were the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt. God is saying, and he's earlier said, look to your history. And countless times through the five books of Moses, remember, remember, remember. Do this and remember. When your children ask me, remind them. And that there's even a church in the church age that they forgot their first love. They forgot where they come from. And God speaking to Jeremiah to the name. Hey, where is the God of Egypt that brought us out? Not the God in Egypt, but the God that brought us out. With his signs, wonders, and miracles. That led us through the wilderness with Moses. Now, God wasn't Moses. But God used Moses. Through a land of deserts and pits. Through the land of drought, no rain, and the shadow of death. Through a land that no man passed through. And where no man dwelt, and yet, where were they without God? They were nowhere. And yet, God that brought them out of Egypt brought them through the wilderness. And the nation is not seeking that God. The church today is not seeking the God of church history. I am whelmed of a new word that I've come up with, Baptist Catholic, that the Baptists today have indoctrinated the traditions of the Catholic Church in their assembly, forgetting that it was the Catholic Church that persecuted and killed Christians. It is the Catholic Church that is against the Word of God, won't open the word of God, that banned the word of God, and you allow their Christmas and their Easter into your assembly. We're coming up on Memorial Day and the churches will honor dead people. And some of them will be unsaved dead people that are in hell and you're honoring their memory? 
of people who outright rejected Jesus Christ. Friend, that's a sin. And I don't care it's American tradition, American holiday, to hell with America. There's no America in the Bible. Why don't we get back to the God and the movement of God throughout church history and never mind a movement of God's small G-O-D-S through Satan's history. I, God, brought you into a plentiful country. That's the land of Israel. Wrongly called the land of Palestine. To eat the fruit thereof. And on the Passover meal, on the Passover day, Joshua entered in the promised land, Gilgal, and the manna ceased. And they began to eat the bread in the store of the land. How many, how many Christians in churches know that story? That God brought them through the wilderness. God brought them into the land. And while they were in the wilderness of deserts and pits and drought and death, God gave them manna 40 years and God gave them water from Christ, the rock. And how many of those Old Testament true stories are brought to you in the churches today? But when ye entered... Ye defiled my land, judges. And even the time of Joshua, when they did not get rid of the enemies completely and holy. I don't mean holy as in right, I mean totally. And made my heritage an abomination. And they did that which was right in their own eyes. The priests, the Levites, said not, where is the Lord? The Lord was lacking from the service of their tabernacle. And they never said, hey, where did the Lord go? And the Lord is lacking from the churches throughout the world today. And no one's saying, where is the Lord? Where is God? Where is the Holy Spirit? It's lacking. No, they believe in their tradition and their worldliness and their carnality. God is approval of them. Because if God didn't approve of us, he would send lightning down and burn our building down. And that's not going to happen. And they that handled the law knew me not. They were supposed to. The law was to bring them closer to God and to realize who they were. Not perfect. So if they were teaching the law, which they were supposed to be, they did not know the God of the law, and that's the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the high priests, and the scribes of Jesus' time. The pastors. Now you think I'm going to go run off the pastors of the church. The pastors are, Jesus said the sheep are to Israel, John chapter 10. And there are men under the priests that were set forth to guide the sheep of Israel, to nurture the sheep, pastors. Men in charge of bringing the sheep here and there and finding water for the sheep, finding fields for the sheep. Shepherds. David was a good shepherd. The pastors also transgressed against me, and you can see where I'm going with this one in the church age. I don't need to make a comment. There are men falsely women in the, in the pulpits of the world today, and they have transgressed against God. They have forgotten the word of God, where they've forgotten the law, and they know the word, they think they know the word, and they know not the God.
and in their assemblies, the Holy Spirit is absent, and they don't say, where is the Lord? They think the Lord's there. Meanwhile, Jesus Christ in the church age, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, he's standing outside the church door, he is knocking, and Satan is inside the church. And they know it not. I was in a church one time, a guy brought in whips and knives and threw them at his wife. Ooh, this is a great. Oh, but the whip that they used, that they would have used for Jesus when they whipped Jesus. Oh, I've left that one home. And I saw that man's card, his prayer card, if you want to call it a prayer card. How great. <coughs> How wonderful the world, you know, the, 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 he's got the greatest record. Listen. And I couldn't find one Jesus Christ on his card. That's not a witness. There was no God. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the God. They say go in the world and, and throw knives at your wife. What happens if you would have hit your wife? What happens if you would have killed your wife? Ah, oh, things would have changed, wouldn't it? I'll never make the, uh huh. Now we got pride. And the prophets prophesied in Baal. Not God. And you read that throughout the king. That's Jezebel's prophets. I thought Elijah killed them. He didn't kill them all. And there are people in the church, hey, you know, the signs of the times, the end is near. And then they talk about the seven, the, 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 the seven at the end of the seven years of tribulation, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they reference that to the rapture. The rapture of the church and the second coming of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ are two totally different things. Oh, there's earthquakes, so the rapture is going to happen. No. You got it wrong. And there's all kinds of religions out there of Baal, Satan. And walk after that walk after things that do not profit. The individuals, the souls. There are many things in the churches today going on in the churches that people are doing in the churches and outside the churches and it won't get gold, silver, precious stones or an inheritance. Though they have been lied. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says if I cut the grass and I take care of the roses and I prune the bushes in the house of God. I don't see anywhere in the Bible that says they believe they're going to get a reward. I don't even see church buildings. As a matter of fact, the closest thing I could see to bushes and trees and all that are groves, and the Bible is against those groves. Be careful. For tradition says, Wherefore I will yet plead with you. God says, I'm, I want you to get right. I am not willing that any should perish. Found in New Testament. Saith the Lord, and with your children's children, your grandchildren, will I plead? God sent in not Jeremiah, God sent uh, 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 Isaiah, God's going to send uh, Habakkuk, God's going to send Zephaniah, God's going to send Ezekiel because he's trying to reach the people. God is sending true King James Bible believer preachers. I didn't say past preachers. And they sit in the pews of the church and they're not being used because they're afraid that the people will turn to them. They teach unweird doctrines of Ruckmanism and all that. We can't have them allowed in my pulpit. So you just sit there and behave yourself. And God uses them other places. 
or pass over the isles of Chittim and see. Send unto Kedar and consider diligently and see it. There be such a thing all over the land God is sending. All over the place God is sending. God may not send to your church house. Because your church house may be just totally shut up and closed. The candlestick has been removed. Has a nation changed their gods? The answer is no. Catholic Church has not ever changed their gods. It's the same gods. Which are no gods. Small G-O-D-S. That's the Gentiles. The Greeks have their gods. The Romans have their gods. They change the names, but it's the same gods. The Babylonians have their gods. The names have been changed. The Egyptians have their God. It's the same gods found in India. The names have been changed. But it's the same gods. But my people have changed the glory for that which does not profit. The Catholic Church has not changed their God. Egypt has not changed their God. But the church is allowed. Esther. And Christ Mass. Nowhere in a Baptist church does Mass belong. But a Protestant and a Catholic church, and they're being celebrated today as the birthday of Jesus. And I've had pastors tell, well, we know it's not the birthday of Jesus. Well, I know there's arsenic in the cookie, but we love the taste of the cookie. We know Eros is the, is the god of the Valentines, but we won't mention Eros. And woe be to the preacher that mentions Eros. Woe be to the preacher that mentions uh, Esther. Woe be to the preacher that mentions Tammuz. Woe be to the preacher that says that in Jeremiah chapter 10 is the Christmas tree, where I've had Baptist preachers say, no, it's not. You don't bow down before that tree. And I say you bow down before that tree to water that tree and pick up the presence which is not Jesus Christ before that tree. The Baptist church today have changed their gods. Be astonished, O ye heavens. Look at what my people are doing, heavens, at this. And be horribly afraid. Be very desolate. They're talking to the heavens, saith the Lord. Heaven and earth. I mean, the, the, the heavens are going to roll up and scroll. The earth is going to be folded up one day at the sins of man. For my people Israel, Jeremiah, have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. That's Jesus Christ. John chapter 4. The church today has forsaken the living waters of Jesus Christ. And they get water guns and pow, 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 and, and, and water balloons. Pow, 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 pow. And the children, oh, we're going to be so great. We just love the, we're going to, we're going to dunk the pastor. Yay. How about, how about we're, we're, we have two visitations and how many are excited to go on visitations? Oh. We're going to go tell people about Jesus. Oh. We're going to have water gun day. Yay. And we'll have pizza. We're going to have a fun day. My fun day is when I go tell people about Jesus Christ on Saturday morning. I enjoy and lavish in telling people how to get saved. That's my fun day. Something wrong with the churches today. And you get angry at me for what I'm preaching. You're the one that started that mess. That's one evil. And heal them out cisterns, broken. They cannot hold water. 
broken scissors that cannot hold water. They got a water fountain, it's broken, and it don't hold the water. They got a church building, it's broken, and it can't hold the living waters of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible speaks as, as a wife, as, as, a, as a cistern. Let thy own cistern be blessed, the wife of thy youth. Proverbs 5, 15, I believe it is. And the women, the wives are broken in the, Cal in, in the Baptist churches. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homebound slave? Ooh, that's a bad word. Why is he spoiled? Israel is a servant of God, and he's spoiled. He's a spoiled brat. And the church says, we're rich, wonderful, great, how wonderful we are. The church is spoiled. The young lions roar upon him. And that's one of the animal symbols. Of Babylon and yelled, and they made his land waste. That's future. And as Israel north, it's already happened. His cities are burned without inhabitant. That's a sorry state it is to be in. Destroyed, will be destroyed. You know the churches will be gone. The people of the church will be gone at the rapture by, and it will be funny of all our great manicured buildings and our wonderful lavish buildings if the Antichrist uses them for his glory. Hold down, hold down, all those that want to receive the mark. You can receive it in your forehead or you can receive it in your arm. March down to your lowest Baptist building to receive the mark. Plenty of seating, plenty of parking. We'll meet you at the altar, head or hand. Ooh -wee. The children of Nob, the children of Tanafis, have broken the crown of thy head, Israel. There's going to be Christians who are going to get no crowns. Hast thou not procured, hast thou not obtained this to thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that's what churches do today, worldwide, when he led thee by the way, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There are historical churches today in Baptist history, in church history, and then very buildings, and then very people are far gone out of the way to what that church was one time. Far out away. I guarantee Roger Williams Church is not the Roger Williams Church. And the first Baptist church in, in uh, um, I can't think of the name, in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, which is the actual first Baptist church, I guarantee that's not the church that was the, the leading of the churches of America. And now, and now, what has thou to do in the way? What has thou to do with Jesus? What has thou to do with Jesus? But what has thou in the way of Egypt? What has thou to do in the way of the Catholic? What has thou to do in the way of Egypt religion? What has thou to do in Babylonian religion? To drink the waters of Sihar. What has thou to do of the way of the Assyrian? And that's Baptist churches today. And I had a pastor again to, oh, you're reading too much. No, oh, no, no, I'm reading history. There's your Assyria, and there's the Egyptian, and the Egyptian and the Assyrian gods 
are in the Baptist churches today. To drink the waters of the rivers. Their rivers. Not the river of life. Not the, not the waters of life. No, they've they, they, they forsaken Jesus. The, the, the children of Israel, the children of Jacob have forsaken Jehovah. Or small G-O-D-S. That's the churches today. We're going to stop right there.